Hello everybody and welcome back to Creation Myths. Today I have a creation contradiction for you. I'm just kind of doing this one off the cuff real quick. We're going to see how it goes. Today's creation contradiction is natural selection versus the idea that the mutation rate equals the substitution rate for the purposes of mutation accumulation and documenting the time to most recent common ancestor, which I've talked about before. So starting with natural selection, basically everybody in the creationist world accepts that natural selection is a real thing, except for the Institute for Creation Research. They have their weird continuous environmental tracking thing going on, so we're going to ignore them. Right? We're talking about everybody else that says that natural selection is a real process that occurs. Uh, they'll say things like, well, sure, natural selection happens, but it can't generate new traits, it can't create anything, it only removes things, it, you can't add with it, you can only subtract. And yeah, that's pretty much true. Uh, the, the overall effect in kind of the simplest terms for natural selection is that it reduces genetic diversity in a population, and it does so in a non-random way, in such a way that increases the frequency of the most fit alleles and genotypes within that population. The key thing here that we're talking about is that those same creationists will then turn around and say, well, you have a linear rate of mutation accumulation that's equal to the per-generation mutation rate. If you have five mutations in a generation, then five mutations occur in every generation, or five mutations accumulate in every generation, and they build up five mutations per generation. So you can look at the divergence between two groups or two individuals or whatever, and figure out the kind of convergence point in the past based on that linear mutation accumulation rate, based on that per generation mutation rate. The kind of more precise way of saying this is that creationists will claim that the mutation rate equals the substitution rate. And this matters because that's how you get a recent date for like so-called mitochondrial Eve or Y chromosome Adam, right? The most recent common ancestors for the human mitochondrial DNA and the human Y chromosome. The fun part is that those two positions, that natural selection is a real thing that happens, and also the mutation rate equals the substitution rate, those two positions are incompatible with each other. This is because the mutation rate only equals the substitution rate under very strict genetic drift, with no selection. And I mean zero natural selection. Once you add natural selection to the equation, you actually slow down the accumulation rate to a rate that is below the per-generation mutation rate. And I want to be very clear about this, because I'm not saying anything controversial here. Any selection is going to slow down the rate at which mutations accumulate within a population. This is a problem for creationists because as soon as you introduce that variable into the math, your time to most recent common ancestor for mitochondrial Eve and Y chromosome Adam gets way too far in the past to be within a young Earth timeline. There are plenty of examples I could give you of people making this argument. Somewhat famously, Dr. Nathaniel Jensen wrote a paper basically supporting the notion of natural selection against uh, this continuous environmental tracking idea from ICR. I think he published that while he was still working for ICR, which is kind of awkward, and maybe one reason why he left ICR and now, as I record this, works for Answers in Genesis. Uh, but I specifically want to highlight Dr. Rob Carter on this one because he pulled an impressive backflip in a recent video by invoking this contradiction in a single sentence. Take a listen to this short clip. The number of ancestors you have means that the mutation rate equals the mutation accumulation rate. Natural selection can only remove a small fraction of those. Very impressive. Now, just to be clear, I want to reiterate, I am not saying anything controversial here. I am talking extremely basic population genetics. You cannot have a mutation rate that equals the substitution rate and also have natural selection operating. If you agree, as Dr. Carter does, and lots of other young earth creationists agree, that natural selection operates on humans, even just a little bit, even if most mutations are below the selection threshold, if natural selection is operating at all, then it's going to violate this young Earth timeline because the mutation rate is no longer going to equal the substitution rate. The substitution rate is going to be too slow to cram all of the diversity we see 
into a Young Earth timeline. Now, I think it's pretty clear that when it comes to natural selection, most creationists are correct, right? It's real, and it actually operates, which means they're wrong about the other side of this contradiction, where they claim that we have a recent date for mitochondrial Eve and Y chromosome Adam, you know, within the last 6,000 years or so. It's obvious to me that in this contradiction, the, the recent, most recent common ancestor is the side of it that's wrong, right? The mutation rate doesn't actually equal the substitution rate. Creationists can't admit that because then it violates their model. But that's the contradiction here, and you can see plenty of examples of that beyond the two that I mentioned. So this has been a very brief creation contradiction. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, share, subscribe if you're not already subscribed, and don't get fooled.